Aren't you glad you're at church? Yes. Well, why don't you say hello to the person next to you if you're here in the room. Give them a COVID safe hey. Hello. And those of you watching online, shout out where you're watching from. My name is Jeannie. I'm one of the lead pastors here at Soul City, and it is so, so good to be together today. Yep, and I'm Jarrett. I'm the other lead pastor here, and if you are new around here, or maybe you're just kind of new to church again, you're coming back to church maybe after, I don't know, a year or so. I'm not sure what you had going on the last year. <laughs> um, and you're kind of new around here. I just want to let you know who we are and what we're all about. We are a, we're a local church uh, with a global vision, but a really simple mission we want to lead people into a transforming relationship That's with right. Jesus. That's why we do everything that we do. We want to help you not only know this Jesus, but actually grow in a relationship with him. And that goes for everyone who's gathered here in this COVID-safe, limited capacity room. But it also goes... Uh, for everyone who's worshiping with us literally around the world online right now. So that's what we are about. That's right. And for those of you that have been around the last couple of weeks, you know that we are finishing up a series yeah. today uh, called Fighting For. We spent the last couple of weeks asking God to help us make a spiritual shift, a spiritual shift in our lives of moving from fighting with yeah, to fighting, fighting for. for healthy relationships. And if you missed any of the previous messages uh, that we did, I, I encourage you to... They're pretty good. Yeah, to go online. Well, <laughs> thank you, Jared. I, um, <laughs> I encourage you to go online and, and watch them. And for those of you that are married, fun uh, event coming up oh, yeah. this weekend. We have our first ever marriage retreat at Soul City. There are still a few spaces. And so I would encourage you to go online, sign up. And you can also go out into the lobby today and sign up and be a part of that. And this week, I just special. wanted to let you know about what awesome. it is. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go Are ahead. you flossing? Yeah. Go, yeah this is, you, you have a long part here. Go ahead. I just to get one in real quick. I am, I am so sorry. Um, you're flossing right now. Yeah, I, I'm flossing right now, Jeannie. You had a longer part, so I thought I had time, so I thought I could fit one in real quick. It's not a big deal. Just finish up what, what you're saying. Uh, okay. Um, you're flossing during our message. We're, we're preaching right now. We're, we're, we're yeah. like sharing God's word. Obviously. And you're flossing I know that. your teeth. Yes. Obviously. Dini, did you know that, like, what a difference flossing can, you know this, like what a difference flossing can actually make in your life? That, that just simply flossing in between meals or at least once a day can actually preserve your teeth and actually enhance your gums and, and help you avoid do, do future you, cavities and Do you work for the painful... American Dental Association no, on the I'm side? I'm just saying it's one of the <laughs> simplest things you can do to care for your teeth, Jeannie. So I thought I'd get one in real quick. In fact, fun, fun fact here. Did you know that dental floss has actually been used by prisoners to escape from jail? It's true. They, uh, prisoners have used dental floss. To, this is true. Saw through wooden fence. And one prisoner actually, over a year's time, built up enough dental floss and he made an 18-foot rope and escaped out of his window in prison. What can't floss do? That's all I want to say. What can't dental floss do? So I'm No just, one I'd say take... amen to that. Okay. No well, one say saying, amen to that right it, now. Here's the deal. It only takes a minute to floss. And I thought I could do this without you interrupting me. It only takes a minute. It's cheap. It's super cheap. It's super easy to do. And it has incredible long-term benefits for your life. I mean, think about it this way. Raise your hand here or throw a, throw a hand up in the comment section if you're worshiping line. If your dentist has ever told you that you should floss every day. Raise your hand if your dentist has ever told you that you should floss. See, Jeannie, these people know. They know how important flossing is. Yeah. My dentist did not tell me to floss at church. I know. Our dentist actually goes to our church. So I thought this would give me bonus points. <laughs> For all the years that I didn't floss, I thought this would somehow uh, make up for that. All right, so okay, I want to take it a step further now since we've gotten honest about flossing. All of us have heard our dentist say that we should floss every day. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to raise your hand, throw a hand up in the comment. Now, listen, you came all the way to church. You need to be honest right now. Don't you lie right now to impress people around you. How many of you actually floss every day? Actually floss every day. Raise your hand. Look, I want you to look around at how much trouble we are in. These are the only people going to heaven. They're the only ones that our dentists actually like. Three out of four dentists approve of these people, not the rest of us. We're all jokers. I think it's finally time that we come clean about how unclean our teeth actually are, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you, Jarrett, for that totally. little uh, lesson. I don't, know what to, I don't know what I'm supposed lesson to do. Lesson on flossing. Put it back in your pocket. There you go. There you go. Nobody wants that. Nobody no wants, wants that. All right. I, all right. I, I think we all see 
what Jarrett did there, trying to offer us a memorable metaphor. Let's see if it actually works here in a minute. Um, but what we're going to look at today is not flossing. Too I know you, it sounds like you could give a whole mm-hmm. message on mm-hmm. that. But honestly, what we're going to look at today is no different. It's actually something all of us can do. It's something that can really only take a moment. It has great long-term effects on your life, spiritual, personal, relational, emotional. It's something that we know we need to do. It's something that people like us often tell us we should do, but it's something we often struggle with actually doing. And so many of us actually ignore doing it altogether. Yeah, just like there is a ton of study, which I will not bore you with, a ton of study and data on the benefits of flossing every day. Just ask your dentist. They'll go on for an hour. No, I'm going to let it go in a second. Uh, but there actually, what we're going to talk about today, there's even more data. There's even more study. More books have been written on what we're going to talk about than actually flossing, and specifically on the mental, the emotional, the relational, and the spiritual benefits of what we're talking about today. And what is that? We're talking about forgiveness. Mm. Forgiveness. It's an incredibly life-changing act that any one of us can do in any moment that Mm -hmm. can change your whole life if we would just do it. In fact, in his groundbreaking book, Forgive for Good, Dr. Fred Luskin just points out in one of the chapters some of the actual physical and emotional, physiological, mental effects, what happens, the benefits of actually forgiving. This is what he actually cites in his work. He said the people who forgive actually suffer less physical symptoms of stress in their life. They're not as wound up Mm. because of it. They report fewer health problems overall. They actually report decreased blood pressure or muscle tension and a higher immune response Mm. in their immune system. And this is what I found so fascinating in the book. He said that people who just imagine, people who just think about forgiving the person who hurt them actually notice an immediate improvement in their cardiovascular system, their muscular, and their nervous system. So basically the bottom line of this book is forget working out. All you need to do is forgive people, (laughs) and that's how you're going to drop this COVID-20. Just forgive everyone every day, and you'll be doing great. So obviously the the benefits of forgiveness are incredible. It's, It's something that, it's one of the best things that you can do, not only for your relationships, but for you personally. And yet so often, I think I found in my life, I think we would all probably admit so often, we miss the power of forgiveness or, or we yeah. refuse the power of forgiveness. Yeah. We deny the freedom that we can actually experience, the healing that comes from forgiveness by just choosing to say, I forgive you. Yeah, and, and you know, if, if we know, if we actually know that forgiveness can set us free, I wonder with you today, why don't we do it? Yeah. Like if we know the benefits, right? Just like flossing. We know the (laughs) benefits. We don't do it. If we know the power that comes with forgiveness, I wonder why we don't do it. And And I wonder if maybe it has something to do with the power that we feel when we refuse to forgive. See, so often when someone hurts us, or they wrong us, or, or we feel like we've been taken, uh, they've taken our power away from us. What we do is we try to get that power back. We try to get that power back by holding out forgiveness. Or maybe it's this false sense of, of moral authority that we feel by keeping them in the wrong yeah. and us in the right. In the right. Yeah. And we, we like how it feels to feel better than the other person, to, to feel better than our spouse, or to feel better than our ex, or to, to feel better than our parents, to feel, to feel better than our friends. And if we forgive them, then we fear that we, we will lose that power or that moral authority. And we don't like the thought of letting them win and getting away with it. So we refuse to forgive. Mm. And ultimately, I think what it really comes down to is that so often we forget who forgiveness is for. We make forgiveness all about them and forget about us and what forgiveness can do for you. Mm. And so the question is, who is forgiveness for? Is it all about them and what they've done? 
Or could it be, could it be that it's all about you and what God wants to do for you and in you and through you? I actually love how, how loose Meads, he, he settles this question of who is forgiveness for. And this is what he says. Forgiveness actually is to forgive and set a prisoner free and discover that that prisoner was you. Hmm. That that's the power of forgiveness. Is that you set a prisoner free and you realize, oh, that was me. I was the prisoner. I was the one locked up yeah. in my unforgiveness. Yeah. I mean, I know that I've experienced that too and, and found that to be true of how that feels to feel locked up, you know, as I've held on to forgiveness, as I've refused to forgive people in my lives. As I try, and this is what's so funny about the strategy, I try and make people pay for how they hurt me, and oftentimes they have no idea what I'm charging them. They have no idea that I'm trying to make them pay, but in my mind, I'm going to make them pay and I'm going to withhold from them. And they, they have, I have no clue about it. And every time what ends up happening, I, whether or not I can actually succeed in making them pay, here's what ends up, who, who, who ends up paying in that scenario? Mm-hmm. I do. Because what ends up happening in me is I end up suffering. Mm-hmm. There's separation within myself mm-hmm. from God, from other relationships. Yeah. And it should come as no surprise that this isn't how God created us to live. This is not God's best for your yeah. Life. God has so much more for you and for me besides just storing up all of our hurts and our wounds, besides just keeping a tally of all of our bitterness Mm -hmm. and betrayal. He's offered us forgiveness. He's offered you forgiveness, and he offers forgiveness as a way to experience freedom in your life, not only in your life, but in your relationships, to experience Freedom and to experience the freedom that only God can give, you got to forgive. You have to, I have to, we have to be willing to forgive. And I want to show you just for a moment, we want to unpack for a second how critical, how central, how essential forgiveness, fighting for forgiveness is for every relationship that you are actually in. Why it's so important for your relationship with God, your relationship with others, and ultimately your relationship with yourself. So, what I would love for you to do is grab a Bible and open to Matthew. 18. So go ahead right now, here online, wherever, grab a Bible if you brought one with you. If not, your phone has one. You can find it. It's called the internet. Uh, You can actually look it up, Matthew 18. You can turn there now, and we're going to do this. Go ahead online. You can go there, Matthew 18, here in this room. Turn in a Bible to Matthew 18. Let me give you some quick context while you're turning there. A disproportionate amount of Jesus' teaching is on one subject. Anyone want to guess what it is? Forgiveness. I mean, a disproportionate amount of his teaching and what he modeled through his actions is all about forgiveness. This is clearly very important to Jesus. He knows that in our relationship with God and in our relationship Mm -hmm. with others, forgiveness is going to come into the mix. It has to come into the mix. It's a part of what it means to be in a relationship. So I want to look at just two verses that are incredibly brief but incredibly clear and I would say incredibly challenging and potentially for you if you're willing to apply them transforming in your life, your relationship with God and with others. Matthew 18, uh, let's start in verse 21. Matthew 18, 21. It says this, it says, then Peter, and I just want to hit pause real quick, this is so fun. If you know anything about these characters in Jesus' life in the Bible, Peter is our proxy. Like Peter is playing the part of us. Like he's the one that just go ahead, he like, he says the thing that no one's saying. He does the thing that no one would do. He just kind of goes for it, right? And so we can kind of see ourselves in Peter because he had a question he wanted to figure out with Jesus. So usually, you know, when this happens, you're going to see Peter learns a big lesson. So then Peter came to Jesus and he, and he asked him, Lord, how many times, how many times am I supposed to forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Now he gives an answer on a pack in a second. He says, up to seven times. Now that is an incredibly specific number for Peter to show up with. So what's going on here? I I believe that this is a genuinely uh, spiritual, sincere spiritual question question that Peter has for Jesus. I think he's trying to figure out this way of Jesus. He's heard Jesus teaching. He's watched what Jesus is all about. He's like, okay, wait a second. What does this mean for me? And so he asked Jesus, how many times am I like supposed to forgive someone? If they keep sinning against me, they keep hurting me. What do you think? Seven times? Now, why is that number important? Because in that day, the the rabbis, which Jesus was, he was a rabbi, the, the Jewish religious leaders of the day taught that you are only required to forgive someone three times. 
if they continue to hurt you or sin against you or lie about you or gossip about you, that you were only required to forgive them three times. And then like, you're like, God, they're your problem now. Like you just <laughs> hand them off to God and that's it. And so what Peter is doing here is he, he's saying, okay, well, I know it has to be more than that. That doesn't seem like, so he kind of ups the ante. He goes, maybe more than double. Maybe that'll impress Jesus. Not three, not six, but seven. I hear he likes that number. And so, <laughs> and so you see him, you know, and you have to give him credit. Like before we like rip on Peter, you have to give him credit because most of y'all, let's be honest, have trouble forgiving someone once. Right. Okay. So don't, let's not rip on Peter too much. Some of y'all can't even count to one when it comes to <laughs> forgiveness. So at least he's kind of putting it out there, right? And what Peter is doing here is what we see in this is what we so, there's a trap that we so often, that all of us get stuck in. Because he's operating under the way of the law, mm. the way of religion. Mm -hmm. He wants the number. Give me the, the minimum requirement. How many times I got to do this till it counts, Jesus? That's right. I just need the number. How much? How many? And what he's missing here is he's stuck in the way of the law is that the way of Jesus isn't about the law. The way of Jesus is the way of grace. Mm. It blows the law away. And you can see this in Jesus' response in Matthew 18, 22. Look at how he responds to Peter. And I can see him like kind of smiling, smirking, like, good try, buddy. <laughs> you know, like, I appreciate A for effort, but let me tell you what I'm all about and this way is all about. He says, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. Not seven times, but 77 times. Now, that's more, obviously, you would contend. Yeah, 77 is more than seven. Quick math. Okay, you got it. Good. Fun Bible nerd fact here, just real, real quick. How many of your translations, like the one on the screen, how many of them say 77 times? There's a lot of translations that say 77 times. And some biblical scholars and theologians kind of think that's the most best literal interpretation. But actually, the broad majority of biblical scholars and theologians believe that what Jesus actually said was something far more significant. In fact, many translators of the Bible actually translate Jesus' answer to looking like this. This is from the New American Standard translation of the Bible, and this is what it says there. Now watch, just moving, how moving one word changes it even more. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you, not up to seven times, but 70 what? 70 times, times seven. seven. See, you just move the word times around and put it in the middle. It changes the scenario, doesn't it? Jesus is saying, no, no, not 77 times, not seven times. No, 70 times seven. Now, what we should point out here is Jesus is not, again, just trying to do some quick math and see if Peter, like, you know, knows how much that, he's like, how much is that, Peter? It's not, it wasn't a pop quiz, right? It wasn't, that's not what Jesus, it's not, it's not about that at all. He's not just trying to raise the bar on the law. What he's trying to say here is he's trying to show that this is the way of grace. That's right. We're not about keeping score. We forgive, we forgive, we forgive, we forgive. Why? Because that is what God does for us. We forgive, we forgive, we forgive, we forgive. Jesus is being emphatically emphatic here. Mm -hmm. He's making an extreme point to yeah. Peter and to every one of his followers that we are to fight for forgiveness no matter what. No matter what it takes, listen to me, no matter what they've done, no matter what they said about you, no matter how long ago it was, that we are not meant to just hold on for the rest of our lives to that diminishing sense of power or control, or self-righteousness. What we are invited to do, especially with the people who hurt you, is to forgive. Mm. You forgive. You forgive. Gang, listen to me. There really is no other play here. There's no other option. And for any follower of Jesus, there's no out on forgiveness. You forgive. You forgive. Now, I want to be really clear. It doesn't mean that you justify what they did. It doesn't mean you say, well, I, guess, I understand what they did is fine. I guess it's right. That's not forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That's rationalization. Mm -hmm. You're not justifying yeah. what they did. You're not saying that it's okay. And here's the deal. You don't have to even be in relationship with them anymore. Just because you forgive them doesn't mean like, well, I guess we go back to where we were. N no. No. But we are invited. Every one of us yeah. is invited to forgive, even if it's 70 times 7 times 7 times 70 times we forgive. That's the way of grace. Yeah, and I think that all of the times, I think through all of the times that, that I've been hurt or when people have wronged me or when I've thought I am so right <laughs> and they are so wrong, how hard I can make yeah. 
forgiveness. How I can justify my refusal to forgive. Yeah. How I can actually try and subconsciously make people pay and even earn my forgiveness. There's times, I have to confess, I've even tried to get God on my side. I've tried to get God to go along with me and to justify my unforgiveness. But I'm reminded that every time I do that, you know who is suffering? Me. Every single time, I'm the one suffering. I'm the one that's locked up, not them. Me. And freedom, freedom is optional, forgiveness is not. Freedom is optional. But according to Jesus, forgiveness is not. And forgiveness is the path to freedom. It's the path to freedom. And we like to think, we like to think of the person that hurt us as the source of our feelings, yeah, right? right? They made me feel angry. Yeah. They made me feel sad, or they made me feel scared, or, or they made me feel insecure. They, they made me feel unsafe. And that makes sense to a point. You weren't feeling those things until they said what they said or did what they did. But I want you to hear this. As long as you make them the source of your pain, then you're also making them the source of your freedom. Wow. It's true. If they, if they are the source, the sole source yeah. of your pain, then they're going to have to be the source of your freedom. Yeah. And what they did is wrong. Yeah. It is hurtful. It is harmful. It may have been totally rude, but ultimately, they are not responsible for your response. Yeah, yeah. For your response yep. to what they did. Yeah. Yeah. And whether they ask for forgiveness or whether they don't, they are not the one that is going to bring you freedom. Yeah, yeah. Only Jesus can do that. Only Jesus is the source. Yeah, and what, what we found, what I found, was, which is so crazy about this whole thing, is that it, freedom, that freedom that comes through forgiveness can, can genuinely come in a moment. Did you know that? It can literally come in a moment. But the, the, the crazy thing is, is that you can spend years of your life yes. carrying around anger, carrying around bitterness, carrying around that self-righteousness, you know, having it affect just about every other mm -hmm. relationship yeah. around you for years and years. On a, it can exhaust all mm -hmm. kinds of energy and attention in your life, and in a moment, you can be free of that. Yeah. It doesn't mean there's not going to be healing work to mm -hmm. be done. It doesn't mean there's not going to be restoration work to be done, but you can be free through forgiveness. You don't, it doesn't have to be like this grand ceremony to forgive someone. Like, okay, well, I got to wait till Sunday because apparently I can only do that at church, right? <laughs> or I got to get all dressed up to do it. Or I got to go online and maybe talk really, you know, in vague enough but pretty specific terms about how this person hurt me, but then I'm going to forgive them and be the better. No, you don't have to make a big deal about it. This is just between you and God. In fact, I want to contend what Jesus, Jeannie said a little earlier. They don't even have to ask for your forgiveness for you to give it to them. In fact, many times they won't, mm -hmm. but you can still offer it to mm -hmm. them. So what I want to offer at the risk of being incredibly simplistic is how we forgive. And, and I want to just say this about this. This message mm -hmm. is about how we forgive, but what I'm about to just walk through in the next couple, few minutes is also how we ask for forgiveness. That's right. Because just in case you're not, for those of you who are keeping score at home, uh, you hurt people too. I don't know if you know that or not. Y'all are a dang mess sometimes. <laughs> and you got people all around you that are like, uh, when are they going to ask to be forgiven? So this works both ways. This message is about how we forgive others, but you can apply it to how you ask for forgiveness in your life as well. And I want to be really clear. It's incredibly simplistic. And ultimately what it comes down to is we want to provide space for you today to forgive. We don't want you walking out of here without the opportunity mm -hmm. to forgive whoever it is that you need to That's forgive. Right. Today. So how, how do we forgive? First thing we have to do is we have to recognize, we have to recognize what happened. 
you got to recognize it. you got to recognize how you've been hurt, how you have responded. You have to recognize the pain. You have to be specific about it. And this can be really painful to do, to bring up. This is really, this can, you need some, maybe sometimes some support for this. But in the process of finding freedom through forgiveness, it's incredibly important that you get as specific as possible, and I would contend for this, as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Don't let it, like, get all this interest built up over the years on it. Yeah. Get as specific as possible, as soon as possible. Recognize what they've done. Recognize how you feel, how you've responded. Recognize how you've responded to it. And then you, when you get specific about whatever it is, and it can, it can, you can do that in 30 seconds. That may take a significantly longer time with the help of a therapist or a spiritual director, but you've got to recognize it, right? That's the first step. And then we come to the place where we can release it. We can release it through forgiveness. We release it by literally saying the words, God, and I would encourage you to do this as a form of prayer. God, I forgive them for, and then say it specifically. I forgive them for, name them by name. Don't paint in broad strokes at this point. Be as specific as possible. God, I forgive my ex for betraying my trust through that affair. God, I I, I forgive them. I can forgive, I forgive them. God, I forgive my dad for not being present in my home growing up. Maybe they physically weren't present or maybe they weren't emotionally present. God, I forgive them for and say it specifically what it is. I forgive them for that. Again, it doesn't make it right. It doesn't justify it. But it doesn't mean I cannot forgive them for it. Mm -hmm. God, I forgive my husband for that hurtful thing he just said. Jeannie gets to practice this one a lot with me. (laughs) And and that, you know, it can be small, simple. I, I can forgive them for that. I forgive them. I forgive them. It's not about just forgetting. It's forgiving. Mm -hmm. It's different. Mm -hmm. How about this one? God, I forgive that church for how they rejected me. God, I forgive that pastor. God, I forgive that small group leader for not seeing me, for not understanding my story. I forgive them. I see how it's affected my view of every church, of every leader, how it's affected my relationship with you. I want to be free. I forgive them. I'm releasing. And what, what, what ends up happening is I'm not only releasing it, I'm releasing them. Like Jeannie yeah. talked, I'm releasing them from having that power over my life. This is how forgiveness actually leads to freedom because I'm no longer bound, I'm no longer tied to that moment in the past. I'm no longer bound to that person. I'm actually free. Yeah. I am free. This is a, a big deal. And I would say that most people in our culture today don't get here. They don't get to this Point. Some folks try and just forget, and I would say that's faux freedom. Mm-hmm. That's false freedom. Just like, well, it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal. No, I want, I want to actually recognize it. I want to release it. And then, if possible, not always so, if God is leading you, not always the case, I want to seek to restore. I want to restore the relationship, if at all possible, if it's healthy or helpful to do or you sense God leading you to do so. Again, in some cases, this can be done in instant gene. I have had moments where we've done things in the middle of a conversation, said something, did something, and we're able to actually get through that process. Like, okay, I recognize, shoot, that's what I did. Man, I want to release it. Will you forgive me for it? And we can restore, like, all in the same conversation. Like, we haven't even finished that cup of coffee, and it's already worked out, and it's done. But I would say sometimes it takes a lot of time. Yeah. It takes real work to be able to restore a relationship. And sometimes, again, it's not healthy. It's not wise to do so. It can take years. It can take support. I would say the support of counselors, of spiritual directors. I'm grateful for those folks in my life who have helped me walk through things that I don't even, I didn't even remember. I would pushed so far down from my childhood, and it's come up, and I've been able to forgive people who aren't even in my life or some of whom aren't even alive anymore. And I'm able to have that relationship restored without ever even coming into contact with yeah. them. Sometimes God leads you to restoring repairing, renewing that relationship. But that really is ultimately between you and God. And, and again, all of this, this whole idea, all of it ultimately is, is not only taught by Jesus, but it's modeled by Jesus. Mm-hmm. And it's offered to you through Jesus. Again, this is, you don't have to turn there. We'll just put it on the screen, Ephesians 4, 32. That's what it's getting at. It says that we forgive each other just as in Christ God forgave or forgives you. We forgive each other because that's what God does with us. 
That's how we're, that's a part of our relationship that's with right. God. That's right. Aren't you grateful that God forgives you? Yeah. Right? Yes. So we forgive because of our forgiveness, how he actually forgives us. We offer what we have right. received. And in fact, another way of saying it is your ability to forgive, your, your forgivingness, your ability to forgive, your forgivingness comes from your forgiveness. That's right. It's not something you cooked up on your that's own. Right. When you experience that mm-hmm. forgiveness from God, your forgivingness increases. The potential for you to forgive others increases. And aren't you glad, aren't you glad yes. that God isn't bound by the law? Yes. That God's yes. not like, well, that was three mm-hmm. times. I don't, know who, I don't know who gets you now. I'm done with you. Aren't you glad that God hasn't canceled you yet? Yes, yes. That God's not like, well, yes. too much, too often, too far, you're done. Mm-hmm. Aren't you glad that the law of grace that we're all invited into, mm-hmm. is where God doesn't make you pay. God doesn't cut you off when you mess up. God chooses to forgive you seven times 70 times 70 times 70 times 70 right. times infinity. That's right. And that's what we're actually right. invited to operate under in the relationships that we are in. That's right. And, you know, while I, I fully believe that freedom is optional and forgiveness is not, I also know that the path the path to freedom is often filled with the painful process of forgiving what feels unforgivable. I know that. I know that that is real. I know that in this room and those that are worshiping with us online, there, there are just unspeakable acts of abuse. There are unimaginable acts of betrayal. There have been unbelievable wrongs. Just unbelievable wrongs done in this world. And done in our relationships and done to one another. And I want to be as clear as I possibly can. Soul City, this church, this imperfect church, led by two of the most imperfect people that I've ever met, is all about seeing people find freedom in a transforming relationship with Jesus. But we do not believe here that if you just sprinkle some spiritual dust and you pray some special prayer over your pain, that it will just magically go away. That would be spiritually abusive to teach such a thing. And this church does not hold to that. That's why we name that this work is, it is hard and it is deep and it often digs up more pain. And this is the kind of work that should be done with a a loving and a wise guide. It's why we have partnered and we have offered referrals to counselors and therapists since the day we opened the doors to this church. It's why we've created classes like wholehearted living and mending the soul and growing through grief. It's why we're opening a physical house of hope, the work of finding freedom and forgiveness. It often needs the loving and thoughtful and wise direction of of, of a counselor, of professional help and safe spiritual community. You know, just this week, just this Thursday at 11 a.m., When I dial up my Zoom to Jessica, the counselor, and I go to my own therapy every other Thursday, she held space for me in areas of my own pain and my own hurt and my own betrayal that's occurred in my life and in my story right now. And I'm so grateful that someone is leading me through this. I'm so grateful that someone is holding space for me, is guiding me so that I can be free. Friends, 
I want to be free. And I long for all of us to be free. Every single one of you that is worshiping with us online, you can be free. It is possible in Jesus. Yeah. And so our whole hope and goal for today is that we would at least provide a little bit of sacred space, just a moment for you. If there's anyone, anything that comes up for you to forgive, that you would do it, that you wouldn't miss this moment or this opportunity. And we know we're, we want to be very um, spiritually wise and caring in this. And this may not be the best time and space for you to do this right now, but we want to provide it if it is. And it could, it could be something small that, like, happened on the way to church today. You're like, you know what? We did not resolve that. That needs to be settled right now, and you can forgive them. Or this may be like Jeannie was talking about, a wound that you've carried for years. There may be some person that's a part of your past or a part of your life right now that, that needs to be forgiven. So we want to just provide some silent, sacred space for you to do that, whatever God brings to your heart, to recognize what's been done, to release it through those words, God, I forgive them their name for. And then if God's leading you to restore a relationship, that's between you and God. We're going to trust you. We want to support you. But that's between you and God if that's the case. So let's just take a second right now of quiet reflection and action. Is there anyone, anything that needs to be forgiven? And again, healing work may come, should come. Support. Care. Care. Is there any part, any person, any pain? That you just need to say, God, I forgive them. There will be work to come, but this is the most important work for this moment. God, I forgive them for that. This is, as, as we've said, this is, this is the rhythm of what it means to be in a relationship. We're going to hurt each other. And forgiveness just becomes one of those tools that we keep handy in our relationships with others. And again, Jesus not only taught about this, he modeled it, he modeled it, he modeled it. And we wanted to, before we left this physical space this weekend, we're going to give you a special opportunity online, is to do something to help us remember where this forgiveness comes from, that it was first offered to us through Jesus. And one of the things that we have missed most over this last little over a year now is being able to actually receive communion together. We, we just physically weren't together, and then we haven't found yet like a COVID safe way to do that without everyone touching everyone's stuff. And, and so what we've actually done is we've uh, found these little communion packs. It looks like something astronauts would take communion with. <laughs> and we're going to hand these to you when you walk out today because I think this is a powerful reminder of the forgiveness that's offered to you through Jesus. You know, the text that we so often read when it comes to reading about where this idea of communion, of receiving these elements comes from, it says that actually in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three, it says that on the night Jesus was betrayed, then he washed their feet and he served them this metaphor of bread, body, cup, blood. But I've read that so many times, I never stopped to even consider. On the night he was betrayed, as it was happening, he is forgiving. He is forgiving. He is forgiving. He is forgiving. And I think that's such a beautiful invitation for each and every one of us. And as Jeannie said, it's not easy. It takes support. It takes work. But this is the way to freedom. God has provided a way to freedom for you. His forgiveness of your sins and mine. And this is how we find freedom in our relationships. We fight for forgiveness with each other. And so what we want to do is encourage you, when you leave today, we're going to hand you one of these that you can take with you. Or if you're 
worshiping with us online, you can go ahead and find your own elements somewhere around the house. And just take a moment to reflect on the body and the blood of Jesus made actually available uh, to you. But before we wrap up today, we want to close out with just giving an invitation to receive that forgiveness from Jesus. Would you pray for us, Jeannie, as we, all of us are coming with so much that we're carrying and so many wounds and ways that we've hurt others. Would you pray for us? Yeah, I just want to invite you to open up your hands right now. Jesus, we thank you that your altar of forgiveness is never closed. We thank you that we can always come. We thank you that the way of grace is a way of abundance. Mm. You give it over and over and over again. You offer love. You offer forgiveness. You offer a second chance, God a third chance, a fourth chance, you just keep forgiving. And Jesus, we bask in that grace today. We drown ourselves in that grace today. And we ask that you would give us the strength to offer the same. That you'd give us the strength, God, to walk towards freedom, to walk towards the new life, to walk towards hope, Jesus, I pray that you would just set hearts free in this room right now. That you would set hearts free that are worshiping with us online. And through your body and through your blood, God, that we would claim that for ourselves, God, and that we would offer that to others. So I pray that this would be holy ground right now as we worship you. You would just open up locks, God. You'd open up hurting hearts. You'd open up memories, God, that that need to to have the fine tuning care of you, Jehovah Rapha, the healer, the great physician, that you would come in and that you would minister, that you would move, that you would do what only you can do, Holy Spirit. We pray this in your name. And we all said together.